Okay. Feel free to watch this. You don't have to. I'm taping it. Uh, how about a problem like this where this is one of the two hard ones on the practice seven, or like this kind of problem. So if we know we've got a projectile launch straight upward with a speed of 32, let's just write down the stuff that we know. So this is all vertical, so the initial velocity is positive, it's going up, 32.0 standard units. Uh, we know it reaches a height of 43 meters, right? So that's going to be the highest, does everybody agree that's the highest point? Uh, oh no, sorry. We want to know how long does it take to reach a height of 43 meters on the way down. Okay, so the displacement, we're interested in knowing when the displacement is positive 43.0 and of course we know the acceleration of gravity is negative 9.80 standard units, right? Okay, or yeah, make sense? What are we trying to find? Time. Time. All right, so we're trying to find T, so what's the equation we're going to use? Number three, good. So we'll say delta x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. And if we plug in our stuff here, we get 43.0 equals 32.0 t minus half, one half times negative 9.8 is just negative 4.9, right? So we'll just consolidate all that stuff into one number, t squared. Okay, so we got to solve this thing, right? So now this is a quadratic equation. Let's push everything over to the left so we get a positive coefficient of t squared, right? So we're going to put this into standard form. So in standard form, then we've got positive 4.90 t squared minus 32.0 t plus 43.0 equals zero, right? So we're just going to solve that using anything we want to. So we could use Desmos, we could use uh, what do you get? Aqueducts, what do you guys like so much? We could graph the function if we want to and just find the zeros, or we could use polysmol2. I've already showed you polysmol2. Real quick, I'm just going to remind you how you can do it with a graph. Okay, and let's use for our graph, let's use Desmos. What do you want, Desmos or graphic calculator? Can we have Desmos? Yeah, I'll let you use Desmos. So I'll show you Desmos. Okay, so if we okay, so if we just add, oops, come on now. So let's just type in that function into Desmos, right? So we get 4.90, we're going to call it x instead of t, right? x squared minus 32.0x plus 43. Okay, so here's what we get in Desmos when we do that. Okay, everybody agree? So those are, we want to know when that function equals zero. Well, there are the zeros. One of them is at 1.892. Remember, that's t, right? And the other one is at 4.639. So if we want to know when the projectile reaches that height on the way down, which one of those are we going to pick? First or the second? No. The second, right? Because think what this projectile's doing. You're throwing it up in the air. Here's 43 meters, right? 
it's going up, it passes it once on the way up, it goes up, and then it comes back down and passes it again, right? So the first time is going to be on the way up, second time is going to be on the way down, right? That make sense? Does that, you know, see how we'd interpret that? Okay. You might be asking, are you, are, are you thinking, well, why does this parabola open down instead of up then? If we're, if we're graphing displacement as a function of time, how come? Look what we did. We flipped it around, didn't we? Right? We said that we, we added everything to the left side of the equation is what we did. Right? See what I'm saying? That's okay, though. Why did we do that? Because we just wanted to pick the easiest thing to graph, which is the quadratic equation in that form. And the zeros are still going to be the same whether the graph opens up or down, right? We're just trying to find all we're doing here. Think what we did. Only reason we used this graph was to solve that equation to know when it's equal to zero, right? Okay. So there's, there's one sample problem. How about one like that? Water balloons drop from a window 24 meters above a sidewalk. The targeted person has how many seconds to move out of the way? So let's make the assumption that it's 24 meters above the person's head, how about, instead of the sidewalk. That really technically probably it should be that, right? So what, what are we given this time? What's that? We're finding time, but what are we given here? What's a bunch of stuff is implied. What's that? Okay, so displacement. What's the displacement? Uh, hold it now, almost. I'm going to call, I really should call it delta y, shouldn't I? Because really we're talking about y's instead of x's. Okay, so we'll, but same thing. What's delta y though? 24? It's starting up here, ending up down there. Negative 24, right? It's moving, does that make sense? Its initial position is here, its final position is zero. So it's, it's, it's moving downward, 24. Lauren, does that make sense? Yeah, I agree. Okay, so negative 24 is the displacement. What else do we know? Gravity. Gravity. So acceleration is negative 9.80. Where one other thing is implied. Initial velocity is zero. There we go. And we're looking for time. So which one are we going to use here again? We're going to use the third one, aren't we? Yeah. Third one again. Only, okay, so this time if we use the third one, we end up with negative 24.0 is my displacement. I'm just going to jump right to the equation. Equals V naught times T. And I'll write it down. Delta Y equals V naught T plus one half A T squared. So negative 24 equals zero minus 4.9 T squared, right? So if I push this over to the other side, we get 4.9 T squared minus 24.0 equals zero, right? Now this is one that we could just solve by isolating T, isn't it, right? I could add the 24 and divide by 4.9. But I don't have to use, because I've only got just a t squared term, so I can isolate t. So I add the 24, divide by 4.9, and then what do I do to that result to get t? Square root it. So then t is going to equal, if I square root both sides of an equation, what do I have to put on it? Plus or minus plus or minus the square root of 24.0 over 4.9. So which one am I going to take this time, the plus or the minus? Plus. The plus, right? Because it's going to be, what does the minus represent? Can anybody tell me what the physics gods are actually telling us with that minus one? Oh, before, 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 the started. before the camera was started, somebody would have had to lob the balloon up, so it went right up to my hand and then it went. It, it, it stopped right when it got to my hand and then it fell back down, right? Does that make sense? Okay. 
So we want the positive one. All right. Okay, there's a couple samples for you. Better check Friday football.